this is another update on the Turing Welchman bomb I've been building. Um, I really need to write all this up. I've been writing it up as I've been going along. There's quite a few parts on my blog explaining all this, um, which probably has answers to any questions people have. But this is just a quick update with where I'm at now. Um, people who have been following will know this is a, a follow-on project from my little Enigma machine watch. And it all sort of came about from this 6502 computer I built as well. But this is where the bomb is at now. I think last time I had it all set up on breadboards and um, basically running on that. I got well past that stage. I actually had it all running with Raspberry Pi 2, running the actual code to do the decoding, and an Arduino to drive the uh, the drums around. And since then, I've actually gone ahead and built a bunch of this stuff. So um, I've made small replica drums. Um, they're about three quarters the size of the real ones, I believe, and that dimension came entirely from the um, the size of the sweet tins that I've used to actually make the drum parts. The rest of it I've just machined up, made up on a little lathe, um, turned up hubs based on the plans that came from the, the US Army report. Um, so I've copied them reasonably closely. I haven't tried to be 100% accurate. This is sort of my version of the bomb so it doesn't have to be 100% correct. Um, because of course it's only the the three indicator drums anyway and not the whole the whole machine um, I have sort of tried to keep in in the fashion of the bomb so it's a steel tube frame uh, this is just furniture tube just cut to size or brazed together uh, this is sort of a tough knoll type material um, which is similar to what's used on the real bomb and eventually it's going to have covers top and, and bottom and side covers that are um, sheet steel painted crackle black um, I have the stop and start buttons Th this is the crackle black finish here it's sort of a textured black finish it's very common on older equipment um, car instrument panels my my both my MGB and the the Austin have instrument panels that are painted in this sort of finish uh, so it's quite common. It's a bit tricky to do, but once you've done it a few times, you get the hang of it. Um, I've got things like the stop and start buttons, which the original bomb had. It's a bit hard to see, but that's a, a still from a YouTube video of the real one. And this is showing the stop and start buttons, and this is one of the indicator drums. Um, it's interesting that on the Bletchley Park bomb, this stuff seems to be engraved on that sort of black and white plastic stuff you can get. Uh, what I've done is I've cheated for now and I've actually just used more of the tough knoll material and used dry letter transfers which are actually getting quite hard to find these days so um, letter set and stuff like that is actually getting difficult to come across. So if the bomb all works I may actually get these engraved uh, on that black plastic the same as the, the Bletchley Park bomb and I've discovered there's a place just down the road for me who can do it for a reasonable cost um, all I have to do is provide them with a suitable a suitable sort of CAD file of what I want and they can um, laser cut and laser engrave them for me. So I may do that at some point. Uh, if we turn this around, you can sort of see inside it. At the moment it's a bit of a mess because unfortunately today it lived up to its name and I think I've actually blown up the, the Raspberry Pi which is sitting in here. Um, so everything's mounted on this on this back plate, uh, including the the stepper motors, which are sort of in between there, the three steppers. Uh, this loosely attached thing at the moment is the main board, uh, and that controls the interface between the Arduino, the Raspberry Pi, and the three stepper motor drivers, which are all down here. Uh, there is a battery in here, and this is a part of the power supply. So the reason it's all sort of loose and falling apart at the moment is because I built it all, I got it running and it didn't run properly. And the reason was because I'd made a fairly fundamental mistake on my driving circuit uh, which was that the, the, the two 
the second and the third drums were not being held. So with stepper motors, when you drive them, you, you send them a sequence of voltages to make them move. And between making the move, you have the choice of either keeping the voltage there, which, which effectively locks the motor into position, or you can leave them uh, floating. Now for this, because it's stepping around, I need to lock it into position each time. And because of the way I'd done the circuit, this wasn't happening on the, on the lower two drums. So I had to replace some of the electronics um, by basically putting in some latches effectively. And so I had to remake this board so everything's all temporary. Uh, then I discovered that it just wasn't working very well. It wasn't running very smoothly, the drums weren't turning very smoothly, and it was skipping letters. Um, part of this was because I'm trying to drive them too quickly, and when I first set it all up with the, the temporary cardboard ones, there's a lot less mass there, so it's a lot easier to, to drive those. Now I've got the full-size drums, there's a lot more mass to move around, and I was trying to move them too quickly, and it, the motors just couldn't do it. So I've had to slow it down very slightly. Um, and the other problem was the way I've been driving it probably isn't the best, which was the the Raspberry Pi is running the, the code to solve the, 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 figure out the solution. And as it's going through each of the iterations, it was telling the Arduino to step the motors one letter. Um, and so I had to get the timing quite accurate between the two. And what I found was that made the motion very jerky. So I've actually sort of flipped it around a bit now. And I'm going to try a different model, which is where the, the Arduino just drives the stepper motors continuously. And it reports back its position to the Raspberry Pi, uh, which can then tell it to stop when it's at the right position. And I think that'll work a lot better. So unfortunately, I can't try it at the moment because, as I say, I may have blown up my Raspberry Pi 2. And that's because you can see everything here is connected with cables and little Molex connectors. Um, I accidentally plugged this 12 volt battery into the 5 volt rail. And the Arduino survived, no problem. Uh, but I think the Raspberry Pi may be toast. Uh, they do have a polyfuse in there, so I may have just tripped that, in which case it, it may reset itself and I, I don't know how long that takes I believe it may take a day or so so I'll I'll, I'll try it again in a day or so um, to see if it works you can sort of see that the housing is on little casters like the original bomb um, this is the the LCD which is connected to the Raspberry Pi which when it's working tells you what's going on and works as the indicator and so that will actually be attached to to this side sort of sitting up there somewhere the same as the um, on the original I also have an on off switch here similar to the original which will be mounted up on this side as well so since I can't get it all working completely properly while my Raspberry Pi is a bit dead um, what I've got at the moment is just the Arduino part set up and working to rotate the drums so before we turn it on, you can see that these move freely because there's no voltage on the motors. So before you start it, you can sort of set it up into position. Um, that's what these little knobs are for, actually, on the, on the real bomb. That's what they use to rotate them. So we can set that up to the approximate starting position. And then when we turn it on, uh, it just goes through a little startup procedure. Um, to set up the drums and you can see this one isn't quite in the right position so because the the stepper motors actually step when there's a voltage on them they have discrete positions and of course on a machine like this just turn that off again um, the positioning has to be fairly accurate so that the the little pointers match up to the letters so when we turn it on and it goes for its little startup procedure. You can see the letters now don't match up, so we can rotate this into position. And you can hear it's clicking. And that's because I'm rotating it against the whoops. Against the um, the, the current holding the motor in position. 
And so now it's basically running the way a normal bomb would. So um, for every one and a half revolutions of this, this one will step. And you can see it's stepping pretty accurately now. As this comes round back to Z, the, the bottom one steps as well. Um, the one and a half times thing isn't something most people expect. So even when they're looking at it, they don't really notice this. But most people would assume that this does one rotation and then this one steps. Um, that's not actually the case. This does a rotation and a half. You can probably see it if you look carefully. And the reason for that is because on the original bomb, it's an uh, electromechanical device. And there are brushes and things that have to be in the correct position for all the voltages to be measured. And so, because the, these two drums take a little while to step, the extra half revolution on, on the top drum gives these time to get into position. And that's basically why it does it. So, at the moment, that's what I have. Um, it's a bit tricky to tell, but the, on the scope behind there, you can see the pulses that are being sent every time this does a letter. Um, and those pulses will go back to the Raspberry Pi, so it will know exactly what letters are being shown on here, and it can tell it when to stop. So that'll be the next step. Um, if we turn this off. The other thing I actually had to do was uh, make it so the, the drums are driven positively. Uh, so there's actually inside here, so, so these do work much the same as the, the original drums. Um, I don't have the little springs for them yet, but if you, if you open up the clips, you can actually pull the drums off and you can see that there's a, on the shaft, there's a little drive dog here. And that fits into, I've got a washer there with a slot cut into it. And that's how I, I positively drive these drums around. So that goes back on there. Um, and that's how they're attached. So that's where I'm at at the moment. Either my Raspberry Pi will come back to life in the next day or so, or I may have to buy another one, but they're only about $40, so that's not too hard to do. Um, the hardware is all there, I just need to tweak the software now to get it running correctly. But um, that basically gives you an idea of how it should look when it's running.